Welcome to another DivHunts tutorial. Today, we're diving into the Table of Contents plugin. We'll cover everything, from installation to a complete guide on how to effectively use it. So sit back and enjoy. First, let's go to the project settings and under Browse Plugins, find a plugin called Table of Contents. Once it's installed, head back to the builder to start setting it up. For this plugin to work, we would need a div, which I'll place here and label it TOC, short for Table of Contents. Next to the div, we'll need a rich text element. I've already prepared one with some text. To make navigation easier later, I'll include TOC in the name of this rich text. Now let's make our setup functional. First, select the div we created, go to its settings and set the transform to table of contents. Next, open the plugin settings and in the content dropdown look for our rich text. You can start typing to find it, it will automatically pop up. You can tell that this is the rich text we are looking for because it contains TOC which we previously added in the name of our rich text tag. After setting that up, let's give our table some styles. We will start with padding. Hold shift on your keyboard and click and drag to adjust the all around padding values. Next, let's add light colored border, we will pick a color from the color picker and lastly, let's set a small border radius here. Right now all the links are too close together. To add space between them, we'll need to create instance. To do that, select your table of content, click on this icon, open the global dropdown and choose list item. Then add a top margin of 10 pixels. You'll notice that this creates a 10 pixel space between each link in the table. Now let's check out how this works on the live site. When I click on the addressing outdated branding link, you'll see that it automatically scrolls to put that heading at the top of my screen. But how does this work? How does the table know which headings to use as anchor points? To explain that, let's go back to the builder and take a closer look at our table. In this table, you'll see main headings and subheadings. The distinction comes from the heading tags used in your rich text. Remember, heading 1 tags won't appear in the table of contents, so always start with heading 2. All main headings here are heading 2 tags in the rich text. For subheadings, use heading 3 tags beneath your heading 2 tags. The plugin works by scanning your rich text for headings. It turns heading 2 into main links in the table and heading 3 tags under heading 2 becomes subheadings of that heading 2. Now that we've covered this, let's look at how my rich text structure is organized. When I open the rich text editor, the first heading you'll see is heading 1, which isn't included in the table. The first heading that appears in the table is a heading 2. Because there is no heading 3 under it, it won't have subheadings in the table. For example, this heading 2 has subheadings because there are heading 3s directly beneath it. As you can see, this heading here is heading 3, and the next one is also heading 3. While we are here, let's add a heading 4 under this heading 3 and see the effect on the table. You'll notice a new subheading appears, demonstrating that you can have subheadings under subheadings. The key is to organize your headings properly in your rich text. Now that we understand how rich text and the table are linked, let's explore how to exclude a heading from the table that you want in your rich text but not in the table. To remove the project overview link from our table, let's edit the rich text. Open the editor, locate the project overview heading and directly before it type square brackets toc-omit. This will exclude the link from the table and don't worry. The text that we added won't be visible to users. It's only visible for the computers, so it won't affect the user experience. Next, let's see what happens when we return to the editor and add this command to a heading that has subheadings. You'll notice that not only does the main heading disappear from the table, but also all its subheadings. I'll quickly undo that command in my rich text editor so we can move on with our plugin. Now, Let's make the entire table follow us as we scroll down the page. We can do this by setting the wrapper position to sticky and adjust the top value to 30 pixels. After that, let's open plugin settings to see additional options that we have. The content field lets you link your table to a rich text tag just like we did at the beginning. 
When you enable the Smart Menu option and test it on the live site, you'll notice all subheadings are initially hidden. As you scroll into their viewport, they appear. And as its name says, it's pretty smart, right? But let's turn off this option for now. The Links Color field allows you to choose the color for the links in your table. Setting the red color here will affect all the links in my table. Because this color is too bright, let's revert it back to normal. Using the Active Color field, you can set a color for the link in the table as it comes into your viewport. For instance, if you click a link on the live site, it turns pink while focused. As you scroll, other links will be highlighted into the color that you set. In the Style dropdown there are several design options for your table. Simple gives a simple design, Numeric adds numbers, and Arrows includes bullet point arrows before the links. Now that we covered the basics, let's explore some advanced options, like adding a hover effect to the links in the table. First, select the Table of Content div and click on this icon here. In this field that appears, type A column hover and click Edit. Now you can edit the hover state for your links. I'll choose red for the hover color and set the text to be bold. When I test it out, you'll see that the links turn red and bolded when hovered. For our next example, we'll use the Inspect tool. It might seem complex, but it's quite simple. On the live site, right click on the highlighted link and select Inspect option. Look for this specific selector in the code that appears and copy it. Then go back to the builder, select the table of content div and click this icon. In this field here, paste what you copied, click edit and now you can manually add styles to the active link. For instance, I'll make the text extra bold. On the live site, you'll see that when a link in the table is in focus, it not only turns pink as we set in the plugin settings, but also becomes extra bold, which we added through this method. The final topic in this video is custom styling for your table of contents. Start by going to the plugin settings and in the style dropdown select the custom option. Next, visit the live site and use the inspect tool to identify the tags you need to target. Since this method is more suited for advanced developers, I won't delve into detailed explanations here. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Until the next time, happy building!